Mark, what is the Blue Vase program at your companies? It's a reward and recognition program for uh, people that are uh, below the management level. And what it is, is it's a measurement tool. The best way to probably describe it is like a frequent miles program. And in our organization, we pay very high salaries, very high base salaries. However, we expect a very high, well, we, in fact, we set a very high, high jump bar. So you get paid well, however, you're expected to excel well. Now, if you clear that high jump bar, and don't knock it off, you have a job for life. If you clear it by some distance, we want to reward you for that. So what we do is we've set up a, a reward and recognition program that acknowledges certain things, and when I say certain things, hundreds of things, of which you get a certain amount of blue vases for. And you accumulate these blue vases up over a period of time, typically six month intervals, and then we have a gala event at the end that you get to celebrate and spend the blue vases. Okay, so what, where did you come up with the word blue vases, or words, blue vases? Well, it's part of a uh, book that we uh, promote, and uh, there, is a, there is a certain guy in there that's looking for a blue vase. And uh, the gist of the book, without telling you the whole story, is that it really is a difficult task to get. And we're really looking for people that basically are go-getters that are really not looking through to plod through life, but to jump the high jump bar and then raise it some. And uh, so that's where it came from. Wonderful. So people are rewarded the blue vases by their supervisor or by... No, they, they claim them themselves. Every month they, uh, they acknowledge what they've done. And there are different things. You can get a sales clearance uh, of uh, excess of sales budget by 10% or 20%. They're pretty common. That's pretty easy. We have other things though, like doing charitable events, getting letters of thanks from customers, things that are community-based, all attract things, uh, all attract blue vases. That's wonderful. And where do these blue vases get collected and, and counted and all that kind of well, thing? Well, we have a system that basically people claim them and we use a little bit of an honor system. So they just claim them each month and this is what I did through the month and, uh, and this is how many I'm titled to. And then we have a register and you can put anything you want on the register on the bottom of each monthly claim form, you can add stuff. We've had people put boats and Harley Davisons and uh, solar panels and watches and DVDs and all sorts of things. And they put them on the bottom of the list and say, we would like this added. So next month, it, the new list comes out with those things added with an amount of blue vases next to them that you would need to have to be able to collect that as a reward. So you're telling me that they collect these blue vases and they can turn them in for motorcycles? Sure, we've had guys get cars and round the world trips and cruises and all sorts of great things. And as well as you know, movie tickets and babysitting and all that sort of thing. Wow, and, and do you find that uh, the, the enthusiasm for the blue vase program uh, is infectious? Do they, does it continue uh, without much prodding from you all? Oh, absolutely. And, and one of the best things that we did, James, was uh, at the claim times, which is twice a year, we used to give the claim forms and how many people, uh, how many uh, blue vases they had to our team members. And we'd get guys that would get a fishing boat or a trip away or something like that. Well, we wanted to get more buy-in from the family, so we send them home. Now guess what's on the list? Makeovers and babysitting and weekend spa events and <laughs> refrigerators, exactly. So what we have is we have an environment where people are actually now setting goals for how many blue vases they want in, in conjunction with their partner at home. And if they're late home one night because they're working late so that they're hitting their KPIs and getting more blue vases, rather than being negative, a lot of the time it's a positive. Well, that's great. So there's a lot of material and research out on the pluses and minuses of uh, rewards and recognition programs. If there's one thing that you would say that as a suggestion for someone who's setting up a reward and recognition program, uh, what would that be? Um, you know what, I would, uh, I would measure it short term and pay it medium term. So what do you mean by, give me an example. Well, we have daily, monthly uh, daily, weekly, and monthly targets, which you can claim blue vases for, mm -hmm. but you only get to claim them once every six months. Or turn them in for some item. Yeah, every okay. six months. So what happens is that those, those events accumulate to a point where 
they might collect a boat or a, or something, you know. And what happens is that those little things, if you give them $20 or $10 or a reward program each week or movie tickets, I'm not saying that's wrong, but my experience has been, if you can let that accumulate up a bit, as long as you're paying them well and they can live all right, then they've got this great big thing. It might be a plasma screen TV. And one of the tremendous things about that is when that's at home on their wall in their billiard room or in their garage where they've put up their billiard table and, and, and their friends say, man, that's a great plasma screen TV there. They're putting their shoulders back and saying, yeah, I got that from work. That was a reward from work. Uh, that's wonderful. I bet that gets the voltage up big time, doesn't it? Oh, man, you, you, you never seen it. When you know, we had a guy claim a car... Uh, an Indian guy that works for us got a car in two years, a brand new car, and all the balloons and streamers popped, and it was fantastic. And he stood up and he gave this presentation about how he's working in 7 Eleven two and a half years ago, uh, and no one would respect him because he, in, he was from India. And then he went, Oh my goodness, by the way, I better get a driver's license. <laughs> so he had set the goal, got the car. And and because he hadn't had a car in two and a half years that he'd been in Australia, or three and a half years he'd been in Australia, and he realised, oh my goodness, in an idiot, you don't need a driver's license in Australia. I better get one. So we actually had to ship the car back to his house on a truck because he couldn't drive it. Wow, that is a great story. Well, that should do it for now. Thank you very much, Mark. I really appreciate your comments.